Throughout the semester, we'll talk a significant amount about spectral reflectance curves or spectral signatures. What we see these as are essentially fingerprints of different targets that can be used to identify them in remotely sensed image, images. So we might have a spectral signature curve of vegetation, for example. It is a slight misnomer in that one would think that a signature is actually unique to a particular feature. Whereas because we're talking about environmental features, there's always natural variability. So there's the, it's not 100% unique and we'll always see variations. But we'll talk more and more about this throughout the semester. A spectral reflectance curve is a plot of the reflectance level in discrete wavelengths. We've already seen a couple of these plotted and you'll, you'll become more and more familiar with in particular the vegetation one as we go throughout the semester. So this may be over all of the EMR spectrum or it might be for, for particular portions of it but it's always specific to a particular material. What it shows for us are characteristic absorption, emission, reflectance or transmission levels of that target in specific electromagnetic radiation wavelengths. To be able to separate different cover types within an image, their spectral signature must be different from each other. First of all, healthy vegetation. Okay, we're going to become more and more familiar with this as the semester goes on. Okay, first up, wavelength and this is actually in micrometers, this is a typo here in nanometers, it should be micrometers along the x-axis. And reflectance, okay, on a scale of 0 to 1, or it might be 0 to 100%, for example. So we see in the visible range, which is only this really, really small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? So we've got the blue wavelengths down at the shorter wavelengths through to the red at the longer wavelengths. Okay, so around about 400 nanometers on the left hand side up to around about 700 or so where the red is. Now if we think about vegetation, we see vegetation as green, right? And that's because within the visible portion of the spectrum, it's the green light that's reflected mostly for vegetation. Okay, so vegetation is green because it reflects more green than the other wavelengths. It's actually absorbing red and blue light and it absorbs red and blue light for photosynthesis. In particular, chlorophyll absorbs at 675 nanometers, and this is really for the use of photosynthesis. The other key thing to note about this spectral reflectance curve is if you look at in terms of percentage of green light that, that this sample of vegetation is actually reflecting, it's only at about 15%. So it's not reflecting a lot of green light at all. This is where satellite remote sensing becomes really useful because we can use sensors that are much more sensitive in the near infrared and mid infrared regions for example. And if we look at the near infrared region of the spectrum here, you'll see that our vegetation sample is reflecting close to 80% of light that's incident on it. Okay, And as we said that the vegetation is absorbing the red and blue light for photosynthesis it reflects near infrared light based on the the cell structure or the biomass within plant communities or at individual leaf levels. So if you think way back to earlier in the lecture when we were looking at the near infrared interactions at a cellular level, you'll see that near infrared light can actually penetrate into the leaf itself and interact with the, with the cells before it's scattered back out and reflected to the back to the sensor. So the healthier a plant is, those cells within the leaves will experience more and more interactions with near infrared light. So what you should start to see is a healthy plant will absorb a lot of blue and red light for photosynthesis and reflect a lot of near infrared because of the internal cellular structure or the amount of biomass. What you'll also see are these individual troughs in the near infrared spectrum here. And these are related to water absorption. If you think back a few slides, we also looked at those points of water, water absorption in the atmosphere, but they're sitting in around about that same place. So we can start to have a think about exactly how much water is in a plant. And you'll also notice here these two really big 
deep troughs in the mid-infrared portion of the spectrum. They're also related to water absorption. So again, if we look at a particular sample of a leaf, we've got absorption in the blue and red regions for photosynthesis, a small reflectance in the green because of the chlorophyll is actually green. We have high reflectance in near infrared because of the internal cellular structure and plant biomass. And then we've got a couple of characteristic absorption troughs which are related to the amount of water in the particular leaf or plant. If we contrast that to dry vegetation, for example, you'll see, first of all, the absence of this defined trough in the red region. So we have our yellow curve that's come up, and we no longer have this really defined trough at 675 nanometers that was the chlorophyll absorption. So we've, we've lost that, so we can immediately tell that this, piece, that this vegetation sample isn't as healthy as the green one. We've also lost the distinctive water absorption troughs. So again, this is suggesting to us that there's not quite as much moisture in that particular sample. And have a look at a spectral signature curve of bare ground, for example. Again, we don't have those chlorophyll absorption troughs in the blue and the red. We don't have the high near-infrared reflectance that the plant cellular structure and biomass gives us. And we don't have those water absorption troughs either. And just to show you some variability here, the last curve I bring up is, is another sample of healthy vegetation. Okay, so you'll see the exact same sorts of features that you saw in the first spectra. So the green and the white one are very similar in terms of where the different absorption and reflectance features are occurring.